Okay, so we're ready to start a question and answer session. Um, so if anyone has a question. I'm coming straight at you. I'm Come on then. I've got a very important question. I've been dying to ask this one. <laughs> electrical devices fail in dreams. Why? Why do electrical devices fail in dreams? I, I wish I knew. <laughs> but I um, detected years ago in reports that uh, people couldn't switch on lights. And it does seem to correspond to other electrical things as well. It could be symbolic in some way of not have, having enough power or something, or wishing mm -hmm. one had enough power. Um, or it could be that there are definite limitations in the production of imagery, which is devious, as I have said before. It's, it, it's, it skirts around issues. Uh, I, I rather like that idea, actually. Um, but until some more research is done, and I feel like getting another sleep laboratory, you know. So, <laughs> You know, it could happen. It needs more research. A lot of people are not bothered by these questions. But I, th I see that, as you do, as a very important um, area. Well, I've tried your, I've tried your light switch uh, theory in lucid dreams. Many times, for me, it's a signal, uh, it's a lucidity trigger. If a light switch doesn't work, I just think, oh, OK, right, it's a dream. Um, but I have actually tried an experiment in a lucid dream where I had very stable lucidity. I thought this might be the chance now yeah. to try and see if it is possible to correctly use a, a light switch in a lucid dream. And I became lucid in a big room where the light switch wasn't working at first, but I knew, mm -hmm. okay, I'm very lucid, I'm going to try mm. this. Mm -hmm. And I pressed the switch, instant illumination. Mm -hmm. And I was really, I was astonished yeah. because uh, I wasn't Absolutely. expecting it and I yeah. pressed it again and it was dark but it got dark slowly like a dimmer switch <laughs> so, yes. so they're still not working properly it, it, yeah. it's like um, was it uh, Van Aden and he Van Aden, said something yeah. mm -hmm. he, he came across a similar well, so, oh yeah he broke a glass he smashed ah, it yeah. tried mm -hmm. it and it didn't do it didn't nothing happen then a bit later on he looked and it was broken then yeah. a bit out of the time lapse, you see, could be something like that. We don't know enough. That's very interesting, isn't it, to do these experiments? It's the just anomalies, Claire, you see, that I'm most fascinated by, because they give us indications <coughs> of a, where there's an anomaly, there's an undiscovered law. That's right, it shows we haven't sussed something out yet. Yeah. yeah. Good. Another, another question? John? Oh. Ladies you can first. Be next. Well, I was okay. a bit facetious and uh -huh. referring to your first lucid dream. Not yeah, really okay. facetious. When you saw Jen eight yes. months later yes. and you recognized her, yeah. did she recognize you? <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> she thought it was a pickup line, didn't she? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I was wondering if we could have if we could both have a lucid dream and meet in a lucid dream. Later, that would mean too that good to be really true, really wouldn't it? Really, if she had. Yeah. But um, <laughs> no. <laughs> and in real life, I'm shy with girls, and I, I wouldn't have ever said, you know, "What do I do?" You know? <laughs> then she, she came first. You see, she said, oh, "My name is Jane," and she looked into my eyes. Oh, well, this is all right. Men are like that. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. John? Uh, well, John had a question. Oh, yes. Uh, Sorry. My question was literally, um, did you tell her of this lucid dream? Yes, I did. But <laughs> she thought it was a chat-up line. <laughs> yeah. This was a big, wonderful experience of my life. And she thought, oh, he says that to all the girls. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so. And your question, please? Have you got anything to say about the links, parallels, or similarities with the shamanic practice of journey. Sh yes, there, there's so many links, aren't there? You probably yeah. study this more than me. Um, different practices do similar things in the Far East. There's the tribes there that uh, they develop lucid dreaming and um, they know what to do to get out of situations. 
I was saying earlier that if you have a, a nightmare um, and you can't quite control this, a good way, recommended procedure, is to imagine laser beams coming from your fingers. They're usually dreams of pursuit. I did a big study on nightmares once and that was the main one of being pursued. Anyway, you turn, you stop, you don't run away, you stop, there's the monster coming towards you, you go zap, and it always works. <laughs> <laughs> and then with great mastery, you know, you feel like this. <laughs> yeah. Then you can direct yourself to anywhere you want, as I said earlier, um, covering your eyes. You're making no movement whatsoever, but you feel sort of well that you're, you know, you're covering your eyes. And you will yourself to that location. And then you open your eyes, and there you are. I like desert islands myself. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I attended uh, an amazing shamanic drumming session at the Gateways of the Mind conference in 2013. It was led by Martin Duffy. And I closed my eyes, and he, he drummed. And it was incredible. He made some suggestions of what we might see, perhaps an animal appears, and so on. And it was so vivid. It was really like a waking lucid dream. And I ended up uh, on a beach, <laughs> dancing with a Bengal tiger, like stamping my feet, boom, 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 with the rhythm of the drums. It was very powerful for me. So there are definitely parallels, yeah. Yeah, um, uh, 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 reminded me of synesthesia, synesthesia that some people have. Um, See, we knew nothing at this when I was at university. The baby is born and then it somehow becomes conscious. That seemed to be the general attitude. But now it's known there's a lot of mental activity going on in the fetus. And it seems that the wiring is all mixed up quite deliberately. So the, the, the fetus is actually getting a lot of visual information. People that were in the dark, a lot of the dark. Well, it, maybe it's getting information. Um, it's hearing noises of the mother's tummy rumbling and all that sort of thing, but it's transferred into, I wonder if you're, <laughs> you would have done so, I'm sure, yes. to um, visual things. So when the baby comes out, it's very used to colours and sequences of uh, patterns and yeah. so on. <clears throat> um, we have certain patterns, uh, imagery, um, drug addicts, if, if this goes back to the um, psychedelic drugs, you know, I you know, was the, that was the best thing going. I'm a drug virgin, did you know? <laughs> because I, some of these students, they came back and they, they'd had the most awful trips imaginable. They'd gone, I'm not doing that, you know, so I, yeah. I'm not going to go. Um, so I don't know what it's all like, you know. I'm sure it's good in many ways, but I, I prefer not to do it. But certain drugs, they uh, produce form constants. And you can more or less tell what drug person's taken by the imagery that they report. There are cobwebs or tunnels, mandala shapes. Mm -hmm. And these are sort of universal shapes. So, you know, when people would draw these, artists, maybe they maybe the just represents that they're taking an enhancing substance. Well, I think it's interesting as well that <clears throat> in lucid dreaming, we can experience things that we actually haven't experienced in, in waking life. So yeah. you just mentioned synesthesia, the mingling of the senses. So you might yeah. experience a, a, a musical note as a color, for example. And when I was doing my PhD research, I had a lucid dream where I was lying on a beach and I picked up some sand in my fist. I wasn't looking at the sand, I was looking into the sky and I knew that the sand was luminous orange because I felt it through my skin. Oh, that's weird and I looked down and it, my hand was full of this luminous orange sand. And when I woke from that dream, uh, I looked it up uh, on the internet. What is this? What's going on? Found synesthesia. And that dream came at a point in the novel where I was trying to find a, a voice for my main character. I knew she, I wanted her to be different, but I didn't know how. And when I discovered synesthesia in this way, I realized, ah, oh, she's a synesthete, of course, it makes sense. 
And after that, I, I made a few successful attempts um, at inducing synesthesia in a lucid dream. So I'd become conscious in a dream and say, I'd like to experience synesthesia. And I would, I stroked a, a wall of different mm. textures, for example. Mm -hmm. And I had different flavors in my mouth, like baked potato <laughs> for velvet or, you know, it was really yeah. very strange, but very, very real. And so it's fascinating that in a, in a dream, in a lucid dream, we open up our, our experience on so many levels. That's right. Now, when you were pregnant, did you have cravings for things? And was this represented in your lucid dreams? When I was pregnant, did I have cravings? Pfft, not really. I mean, you know, some people, they start eating all sorts of crazy stuff when they're pregnant. I had a real craving for black olives, and my daughter loves black olives. But I don't, I don't remember dreaming about black olives. I just, I really wanted them. One of my wives, she had, um, she had a whole rubber tube for the washing machine. Ah. You know, during that, you know, not wow. much nourishment in there. <laughs> no, I never did anything like that. We've got added uh, proteins or something. Yeah. <laughs> Who knows? Oh. Well, yes, yeah, so, uh, <laughs> I need a lightning conductor. No, I know I would no, no. Um, um, I think I would, I've got some ideas that we might soon be able to hear precisely what's happening in a dream. But I, I'm not going to say more than that because it's, it's, it's a lot of ideas about it. And then eventually we surely will be able to just to bit of an implant, you know, we'll be able to actually get an output to the computer, and we'll be able to see exactly what's going on. Then people can share their dreams then, you see, it'd be amazing. That would be amazing, yeah.